Well, it's nice to be out of the studio and into the garden and doing something a little bit different in this video because I have a secret hobby and my hobby is photography, but not any photography, it's macro photography. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today I'm going to be doing macro photography in my garden right next to my studio because we're going on a bug hunt. So uh, let's go see what we can find to photograph. So way over here, I think I saw, yes, <laughs> uh, one of the bigger things in the garden at the moment, it's a crane fly or a daddy long legs. And it, it's gonna stay around for a while, I think. And that gives me a chance just to explain my, my basic idea with macro, which is when I'm doing insects, I like to take wide pictures first of all. So just to take a shot like this, there you are. What that does is it allows me to show the surroundings, which is really useful for social media posts, but also just to give some environmental context to this little guy. It also gives me another advantage as well. If I start wide and then move in, I can see where he is in the frame without losing him, because sometimes it can be really easy, especially when you get closer, just to lose what you're focusing on. It can just disappear. It's a little bit breezy today, so it's actually quite tricky to, to get them to stay in frame the closer you get. And he really isn't going anywhere. This is fantastic. And now we're getting in super close. And I'm about as close as I can possibly go, I think, there. Oh, he's landed. Oh, <laughs> and that's kind of what happens a lot when you're doing macro photography. You get closer and closer and before you get the really good shot, they've gone and you end up with just a picture of a leaf or some grass. But um, yeah, plenty more subjects where that came from. Let's keep going. So deep into that plant, I can't actually see you. Come on, how'd you come? There we go. So now's probably a really good time to explain what macro actually is. So macro photography in its purest sense means that something that measures, for example, one inch in reality would actually project onto my camera sensor at one inch if you measured it on the sensor. So that is one to one life size reproduction. That's true macro, but the word macro has been slightly diluted over the years to basically mean anything that's close up, which is great because this camera will do full macro, but most things don't need to be that close. And if I need to go even closer than my macro lens will allow, I can use something like this. So these are just basically lenses with no lenses in it. It's just holes through the middle. They're called extension tubes and they literally extend the lens further from the sensor and that allows the lens to focus even closer which gives me greater magnification. They do decrease the depth of field even further because you're going to be focusing even closer but in the right circumstances they're a great little buy for not a lot of money. That is a tiny spider. Camera settings tend to be fairly static for macro work, so I'm going to work in continuous shooting, so lots of photographs, simply a numbers game. The more photos I take, the more chance I have a correct in-focus shot, but it also comes in handy for focus stacking. The aperture and the ISO are the next two things. ISO 200, standard ISO for my camera, aperture f8. So with my camera, if I start going for a smaller aperture, f16, f22, 
I'll notice a quality drop off really quickly. It's called diffraction. F8 is a good compromise between excellent quality and good depth of field. The depth of field when you're shooting macro becomes shallower the closer you get. And finally, shutter speed, I'm going to work at my flash sync speed 250th of a second or anything underneath that. Which really brings us on to flash, so let's take a few more shots and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about flash. Now you may have noticed I'm using flash for all of my photos and there's a few downsides to flash you should be aware of. The first one is it does make the whole thing much heavier and much more uh, hard work on the hands. Then there is the fact that it sticks out from the front of the camera. I do tend to find I'm bashing leaves and plants and disturbing wildlife. It's not good from either of those two points of things. But there is one reason that this is brilliant and it's simply because of the quality of light that you get and not only quality, consistent quality of light. And for that reason alone, that's why I'm sticking to flash. Let's see, now, flies are really difficult to get because they tend to, well, as the name suggests, fly off. And the art with doing this is not to cast a shadow until you absolutely have to. <laughs> Work my way in, trying to avoid shadows. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, this is better. This guy's not going anywhere. And I'm also trying to put my focus point on his eye. That's the bit I'm really interested in, getting the eyes sharp. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and sure enough, he's gone. But I think in there somewhere, I've got quite a good shot. Sometimes you can run around looking for insects, but sometimes it's better just to stand still and see what comes to you. Patience is one of the, the really essential things for this sort of photography. Just waiting and watching. Oh, there we go, that was an incredible hour just wandering around the garden, finding the small things to photograph. And the amazing thing for me is, all of these photographs were taken in a really small area, just a, a few meters square. But there's loads of things to find if you stop and have a look. And a macro lens really opens up a whole new world of photography. If you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.